PayPal is a powerhouse in the digital payment industry, with a market valuation of over $84 billion. The company's annual revenue has seen impressive gains, reaching $27.5 billion in 2022. PayPal was one of the preeminent leaders in digital payments starting 10 plus years ago when they were you know, a part of eBay and, and was the number one place where you would feel comfortable in putting your personal information online to be able to transact a payment in the e-commerce world. But the company's performance in the stock market paints a different picture. After reaching new heights during the pandemic, shares of the company saw significant losses. In January, PayPal also announced it will lay off 2,000 employees, accounting for about 7% of its workforce. PayPal was really profitable during the pandemic and grew so quickly because ultimately people were going digital, right? I think it's quite obvious that their growth is slow. Uh, I, mean, the, I think the question is really that, you know, what's driving that? We like to compare PayPal, unfortunately, to, to an IBM of the world. We wonder, like, is this the new big blue? Thinking about a company that, that was at the top of its industry that ultimately saw its organic growth prospects start to decline. So what is happening with PayPal? And will its stock recover? After going public in 2002 at just $13 per share, PayPal was acquired the same year by eBay for $1.5 billion. eBay obviously needed some type of payment solution, and, and PayPal was, was the perfect fit for them at the time. eBay stepped in as you know their biggest and largest and most important partner, and together they were able to help foster that checkout experience that so many consumers were feeling comfortable with, with transacting. At one point, approximately 60% of PayPal's revenue came from payments made on eBay. PayPal's foundation with eBay, I mean, it really just gave them a base to build off of, um, I think, in the early days. And I think that's very important for payment processors, payment processors of any type. You know, they need scale. It's a scalable business. However, that relationship came to an end in 2014 when PayPal split up from eBay to become a separately traded company. PayPal was getting to a level of scale where now it's branching off into different areas of digital payments, be it uh, wanting to get into more merchants that are outside of eBay and more of the P2P and consumer side of the world. If you think about the Venmo and Braintree acquisition in the mid 2010s, that type of a business is something that wasn't necessarily strategically moving the same direction as what a, a traditional online e-commerce retailer would do. After the split, PayPal revenue continued to soar, eventually surpassing eBay in annual revenue. eBay was a strong player, I think, early in the evolution of e-commerce. Uh, but as time went on, you saw more and more marketplaces and the growth shifted elsewhere. And I think PayPal being an independent player, I mean, that, that's one of the things I think was crucial for them in terms of the spinoff was being able to be an independent player and serve all of those other players that are out there. And that was, I think, very crucial to, to PayPal's ongoing growth. Today, PayPal makes about 90% of its profit from transaction revenues, or fees they charge to merchants and consumers on each transaction. This makes total payment volume an essential metric for the company's success. So total payment volume, or TPV, is one of the key metrics to understand the growth of PayPal's business on a long-term trajectory because it's a payments company. And it's what TPV really is, is the culmination of the various products that they have and the spending that goes over their platform that they charge their take rate on. While it's not necessarily the one-to-one -one, uh, read through to what revenue growth could be or what future earnings can be, it is an important leading indicator to see you know, how important PayPal is to the e-commerce environment as a whole. This is why PayPal thrived during the pandemic, as consumers were forced to depend more on online transactions. Annual revenue shot up from $17.8 billion in 2019 to more than $25 billion in 2021. And shares of the company saw new heights during the same period. I think it's pretty easy to see how um, when we're all locked at home, that digital payments were going to be a much more important part of our financial lives. Not being able to go out in, in to a restaurant or to go to your favorite local uh, retail store also lent itself to more online shopping where PayPal was, was clearly one of the best positions and in turn led to outsized growth from a volume perspective over those you know year and a half. But as pandemic restrictions began to ease, PayPal stock began to show a crack, 
losing all of its gain over the pandemic just within a year after a series of disappointing earnings reports. PayPal was obviously a beneficiary during the pandemic and post pandemic, a lot of investors sold the winners. I, I think, you know, to me, it, it implies that the market um, is very focused on kind of near term absolute growth. A lot of investors and, you know, PayPal themselves thought that the e-commerce growth was going to continue to grow at really significant levels. At the height of the pandemic, e-commerce retail sales accounted for 16.4% of total sales in America. Since then, the growth has largely slowed down, remaining under 15% over the past two years. The forecast of, of e-commerce growth over the next three to five years is anywhere from 10 to 15%. However, pre-pandemic, you were operating in an environment where e-commerce was growing anywhere from 20 to 25. As the lockdown subsided, you know, people went back to in-person spending. Some people, believe it or not, even went back to cash. The discretionary funds that you and I have on a day-to-day -day basis start going to uh, additional services and are under more pressure with the, the impact of inflation. So when assessing what you're gonna be spending your monthly paycheck on, a lot of e-commerce is discretionary. Things like additional clothes or experiences online and other digital goods and services that you may not necessarily want to be allocating that much of your budget to. And while PayPal's total payment volume has seen continuous gains, its growth has largely slowed down. Today, some of the biggest tech companies have an online payment platform of their own. And even big banks are joining in on the action. The thing about PayPal, the, there's, a, there's a positive and a negative to the fact that they're so focused on e-commerce. The, the positive, obviously, is that, that it's a high growth area um, and that benefits them over time. The negative is, is that that's where a lot of the fintech innovation is, is, is centered um, and a lot of the investment um, is, is going after that space. For the pandemic, there weren't really many other buttons um, that you would see on your, your general Macy's checkout page. Not traditionally viewed as payment companies starting to come to the surface with additional buttons. So Shopify's Shop Pay button and Amazon's checkout with, with Amazon Pay are starting to become real drivers for those businesses. And, and not to mention the biggest threat of all, Apple Pay, which last holiday shopping season showed better growth than really any other payment method um, that was available to holiday shoppers. Despite the split, PayPal and eBay had a five-year operating agreement that allowed PayPal to remain as its primary payment partner. That agreement came to an end in 2020, contributing to PayPal's slower growth. Termination of the eBay um, business certainly was a, report, a, a drag on reported growth. Um, you know, that was real revenue that, that, that they lost. I don't think it's any coincidence that, that at the same time that the eBay agreement started taking effect and leading to a headwind in the business, you started to see a broader deceleration in PayPal's growth. Despite its struggle, PayPal's role in the fintech industry is far from over. PayPal obviously is a, is a business that faces some issues in the near term. You know, I don't think anybody questions that. Um, but from our point of view, the long term picture still looks pretty bright. I don't necessarily think it's the end for PayPal. It may be the end for PayPal being viewed as the preeminent leader in digital wallets and digital payments. However, I think that, that PayPal is really well positioned to grow in line with e-commerce in the foreseeable future. For now, PayPal's focus has been on long term growth. I think the near term opportunity, there's not much that they can do about kind of market conditions um, and the growth there. I, I they just kind of have to weather it. Now, we still think that overall the stock is not a safety play. If the market should go down with an economic downturn, we think PayPal is gonna go there too. But we do think that they're setting up the company for a really long-term uh, strategic initiatives that should benefit both revenue growth and adjusted EBITDA margin expansion. PayPal declined to participate in this documentary. During its 2022 second quarter earnings report, PayPal CEO Dan Shulman commented that while there are a number of unknowns regarding the macro environment, we can largely control our spend and its implications on earnings growth. Experts suggest that PayPal's next move should be focusing on what it is they do best. I think Venmo is still an asset that has a lot of the makings of the future of digital wallets and consumer banking. Um, it, and, and a lot of the, the Gen Zs and Millennials of the world are increasingly using digital wallets like Venmo and Cash App as their primary bank account. Dan Schulman, who became the CEO of PayPal in 2015, announced his intention to retire from the company at the end of 2023. Determining who will lead the company next will play a crucial role 
on whether PayPal can return to its former dominance. I think that overall, there you know, is still uncertainty about who's going to run the company and which direction this new CEO will have for the company. And while Dan had several years of, of really quality um, growth and, and, and share appreciation, I think some of the pitfalls that, that emerged post-pandemic uh, really kind of you know, signed his end for, for PayPal. It's important for PayPal to secure new leadership as soon as possible, particularly as a lot of its competitors continue to step up their investment dollars back into their businesses.